Hello to our dear friends and our beautiful souls watching a new episode of Positive Living. Today our focus will be on gum diseases or periodontal diseases. Now these refer to conditions in which the gum or the tissue surrounding the teeth result or face inflammation. Now in earlier conditions, this may mean red, swollen gum or even bleeding of the gum. And in more severe cases, there may be abscess and people may even lose their teeth. Now, gum diseases are very preventable, and so this is why we're always telling you to visit your dentist, to take very good care of your teeth. In fact, I have an appointment shortly, and in this next segment, please stay tuned so we can learn more on gum diseases and how they will not be an obstacle in the face of a more positive life. Welcome back to a new episode of Positive Living. Your gums are underestimated. There are plenty of things that you could see in the mouth that you can read from just looking at the patient's gums. What am I talking about? Your health in general could be seen in your gums. Gums are very important for you to keep clean. It progresses from gingivitis and then goes all the way to periodontitis. What's the difference between the two? Gingivitis tend to have the inflammation very much restricted in the gum line. It does not go down to your teeth, does not affect any tissue or ligaments that are supporting the teeth, and will not affect any of the, of the bone that's surrounding the teeth. But once that gets neglected and not treated, it will progress to something called periodontitis. Periodontitis is a, a very, 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 very important, uh, uh, a very important health issue that we have to look at. If you have issues with your lungs, if you have issues with your blood, if you have issues with your heart, you will still seek a doctor. But unfortunately, some patients who have bleeding gums don't tend to go to the dentist because they think they could treat it at home. But with periodontitis, it's a late stage where things might not be as, as reversible as when they were in their initial stages of gingivitis. Now let's talk about periodontitis. When you lose bone around teeth, your teeth tend to be more mobile. They tend to drift. They will might, some people might come and say, hey, I'm 40 years old and now I'm developing some spaces between my teeth. Well, what's wrong? Usually, it's, it's because of gum disease. But in some cases, when you extract teeth, their teeth tend to, to move away and fill that space. But when you have gum diseases, your gums tend to, to, to recede, your teeth tend to be more sensitive. And usually, we cannot really reconstruct what, whatever you lost, but in local areas, we can go ahead and do so. What could be affecting periodontitis and how is it worse? Usually patients who have uh, health issues such as diabetes or autoimmune diseases or patients who are immunodeficient, uh, who are immunity is very low and could not defend themselves. As bacteria get into your gums, they tend to break down a lot of, of the structures that's around, around their teeth. So we need to combat that and, and intervene as soon as possible so that progression could be controlled and restricted. In some cases where the progression becomes so severe that the mobility effect of the teeth is so severe we were not able to save that tooth, uh, we will have to look in general uh, around your health and might intervene to try to save the teeth and maybe splint them to keep them intact and allow the tissue to reattach to your teeth and hopefully hold them back in place. Smoking, genetics and diabetes are the three major aspects affecting your gum, gum health. Genetics, where your family tend to just be unfortunately part of that 7 to 10 percent, where whatever you do, nothing could, 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 could work and, and it's just a progressive thing. But we can slow that progression, maybe restrict it to some degree if you, do a, a, if you, if you seek a periodontist uh, uh, treatment and he will put you on a scheduled uh, treatment plan where he will have to see you every three months uh, for the rest of your life. It's not a bad thing, it's just addition of more treatment, taking care of your teeth in a professional way, who doesn't want that? 
But in some cases where it's not genetics and it's uncontrolled diabetes, we have to control your diabetes. Your diabetes, what it does, if you have uncontrolled diabetes, your immunity tends to be lower. Your reaction to things won't be as strong. And in some cases where you try to control that diabetes, we have seen that not only your gum health becomes better, but because your gum health becomes better, your diabetes comes better. So it actually is a two-way stream where not only improving your gums will improve your diabetes, but improving your diabetes will also improve your gum health. There's a third aspect, which is smoking. We'll talk about that after the break. So I'll see you at the break and smokers, stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. We we're talking about smokers and gum diseases before the break, and we're gonna go more into that now. So, the thing about smoking is it actually makes things worse. Rather, whatever your treatment in regards to your gums, whether it's surgery, whether it's implants, whether it's bone grafting, tissue grafting, whether, whether it's as simple as trying to, to clean your teeth and the response to the cleaning will be much less uh, in smokers. How is that? Why is that? Smoking tend to affect the teeth in a silent way. It restricts the blood supply in the area. Therefore, if you have initial uh, stages of the disease, it won't, your gums will not bleed, so it will not give you that initial indicator of having those diseases. Because of the amount of smoking you have, the blood supply is reduced, therefore not only the bleeding reduces, but the defense system for your body reduces as well. The breakdown will become more, the treatment response will be less. Therefore, cutting down on smoking when you have gum diseases, or even if you don't have gum diseases, is very, very important. Not only for your health in general, but also for your oral health. There are other things that might affect your gum, disease, uh, gum, uh, gum health, which is using a, something as simple as a floss. A floss is so, so important for you to floss your teeth. There are about 40%, 40% of your teeth is actually hidden between the teeth. The toothbrush cannot reach. Therefore, if you clean your 60% of the teeth, the areas in between the teeth where food gets impacted will continue to destruct, destroy the, the tissue under, under there and progress further on. Not only that, but not only will you have issues with your gums and recession and sensitivity, but you might also develop something called halitosis, which is bad breath. You will have a huge, huge, huge difference. You will notice that huge difference once you start using the floss. There is different types of floss and floss techniques as well as different types of toothbrushes that you, I would recommend you using. Uh, the floss is important to go ahead and do floss in the proper way. Not only just flossing in which you get the floss in between the teeth and come out, but you're actually hugging the tooth and making sure the surface of the tooth interproximally between the teeth tend to be cleaned as well. Using a soft toothbrush is very important for your gum health. Not using a medium or a hard toothbrush, the softer the toothbrush, the, the less traumatic it will be on your teeth. The more you use hard toothbrushes or very or medium toothbrushes in a very destructive way might cause recession of your gums, increase the sensitivity, even though you're trying to clean your gums, but you're actually affecting your gums. Too much love might affect it. Try to be as gentle as possible in your gums. Visit the dentist on a regular basis. If there's any issues with your gum, it's better to detect it in an early stage. Once the, once the progression of the disease becomes in a later stage, you, the outcome of the treatment tend to be less predictable. It might be not as satisfactory as you think or believe, but use a floss, clean well, be gentle, see you every three months, six months, know your medical history, and everything should be fine. So thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again in the next episode. Bye-bye.